Good afternoon, Imworld 2017. I'm really pleased and honored to be here today, and I'm really happy. Can you see? Yes, I'm back. So, I want to take a journey with you to 2030, and I wanted to ask before I start, who is ready for the future? Yes, I see a hand. Just one person? Ah, that's what I thought. Fast. If you look at the last 10 years of innovation and development, they are at the same pace as the uh, previous 50 years. An expectation is, is that the growth in innovation is an exponential growth, which means that the upcoming three years will be as fast as the previous 10 years. So you can imagine that in the future, changes are going faster and faster. But it's so important that we understand what is happening to also accept all of these changes. So as I said, today I want to take you guys into the future. And I'm actually a little bit nervous because I'm not talking about technology and all that stuff that is happening. But I want to talk about the human needs and the human values beneath and behind all that change today. So who are we in the future? How do we live? How do we work? And why are we doing that? So I'm Cecile, um, and I'm actually really a lucky ass because I'm obsessed with the future and I get to work with it every single day by helping people understand that future and also um, how businesses change their products and their strategies to be ready for a future that they might not even know exists. If we talk about the future, we can talk about so many things. So I was so cheeky to already make a choice for you about what we are going to talk about today. It's going to be about living and work, about identity and status and community. I do not believe the future is a fixed phenomenon, but I think and I actually believe that what we do today is of influence on tomorrow. But therefore, it's so important that we understand what that tomorrow is going to be. And actually, if we look carefully, we can already see what it's going to be. And it's always very nice to be at a session, 
but I really think it's important that you take something from it. And there will be people in this audience that will say, that's not true what you're saying. And there will be people that think, oh, that is interesting, that is exciting. So my goal for you today is that there is something today in, this, in my presentation that inspires you or that makes you think about something or that tickles you because that's maybe your focus for the future which is interesting for you which could be your passion which could make you drive change so today my goal is to help you understand that future and to make you more aware of the change that is already happening because if you become more critical and competent about the future you will have the dare to make those changes and to walk other paths than actually most people do so let us start with work and living. If we talk about work and living, there are two words that cannot uh, be forgotten, namely urbanization and automatization, or also known as robotization. But let us start with living. Did you know that urbanization is actually uh, um, a term from history? It's actually a term that has everything to do with urbocentric urbanism. And that was a luxury back in the golden age. But that idea, of building cities as an exclusive exclusivity, as something that isn't focused on big crowds and a lot of people. That is often the idea what we bring into the future. And therefore our cities, with the idea that we are building them now, are not fit for a lot of people. But we already know that in 2050, 68% of all human beings on this planet will live or want to live in cities. So there's a lot of big challenges coming towards us, not only infrastructure, but also food, health, and also social, social problems like loneliness or hidden loneliness. City tissue, as we know, is built up in the air now, so we're making uh, skyscrapers. But in the future, we will be looking at expanding city tissues. So for example, I I'm come from, from the Netherlands. It's a really small country. And I can imagine, you can imagine it in the future, like the different cities, for example, Amsterdam, could be easily be one big city. And maybe in the further future, like the Netherlands could be a city of like Europe, for example. And who knows Elon Musk? Can I see some hands? Ah, that's what I was expecting. And if people don't know Elon Musk, do you know Tesla? Yes, more hands. So Elon Musk is already taking two people to space next year, so we are now looking at expanding city tissue, but maybe in the future space colonization doesn't seem so strange. Or what about uh, New York, a central park? There are also already plans to have the same park underneath our Earth. And um, for example, the air is also a very interesting area to look into to the future, because as a child you might imagine and you talked about air coastals the first concepts to get houses in the air floating around they're also in the make so everything is actually possible and what we can't imagine now could be reality in a few years if you talk about work it has a somewhat more rural rural um, impact and a change of heart because a lot of people are still afraid for robotization for automatization as they think it means they will lose their jobs and they will have skills that won't fit our future. But what we forget is that we should see it as an opportunity, become more aware about our individual skills. Because if everything what we know today disappears, that's a big opportunity to see what is left or what you could develop. People always evolve themselves. If you look back to history, and that's so important if you want to understand the future, to understand the history, we can see that people always evolve themselves. For example, the first machine age is actually exactly the same as what is happening now. There were machines and people thought, okay, what am I going to do now? And then we evolved ourselves into new skills as well. Yeah. And thoughts and ideas are not things that will be easily taken over by technology. I'm pretty... I'm pretty convinced of that. Creativity becomes the new important skill. And it's no surprise that jobs are disappearing as we know them today. But that farmer of today could be working from a control room uh, in 10 years and working his agri-drone. 
And those car mechanics could easily become robot mechanics. It's just you have to see um, the chances that our future is offering us because I think it's quite exciting. And if we look into some trends um, in the area of work and living, I think the most impactful one will be EASME. EASME is all about convenience, about self-determination. How can we make our future world as con and convenient as possible? And that's where technology comes. But I don't think technology is an answer. It's the tool to help us achieve the things we need and we want in the future. So who had to wait today for something? Like for a bus or a train or a pickup that was late? Nobody? Yeah, 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 I see some hands. In our life, we are waiting so much because the efficiency is not always optimal. And I believe that internet can, and the technology can really help us. And the nice thing about trends is that you can see the seeds of the change of tomorrow in products today, the products of innovators, the products of the ones who are the front runners. For, for example, Amazon Go. It's, it's all about ease me. It's about walking into, your, into a store. It's about being recognized. It's about walking out without having to wait. You, you do have to pay. That's like the downside of it, but you don't have to wait. Or what about robot parking at Paris Char de Gaulle? It's a robot and he has a name. I always loved it when they put, have a name for robots. This one is called Stan and it helps you park your car when you fly away from Paris. Again, it's helping you being more convenient with time. Robocop, it's in Dubai. The, the police force in, in Dubai has already robots and they are wanted to build it up so they can have the force of humans for the things that robots can't take over. And also about a deviceless future. We are very happy with our iPhones and our iPads, but what if you just had this ring? It's a startup, it's called Ori, and you, with bone deductive, bone deductive technology, you can just put your finger at your ear and you have everything that you now have in your mobile phone. All little signs of how we, are, we can use and how we have the need to have technology that makes life easier. This is a trend I'm really, really exciting about. It's about neo-nomads. It's about alternative use of space. It's about dematerialization and about a growing access and sharing economy. It's about flexibility, about new forms of living uh, that answer to the enormous need of human being to be free and to move around free. We can see an enormous rise in travel and also now in living from one city to another. Because new generations, they don't sell cars, they don't, sell house, they don't sell, buy houses anymore, they don't buy cars anymore. And they also want to have this opportunity in their living situations more and more. Because less possession, possession is more space to move around. My clicker is very enthusiastic today. This is a concept from Japan. It's about a modular building. It's uh, actually based on, on a, a vending machine. So this designer said, we are using a lot of space and if we wa once use it, we can throw it away. But this modular building is actually based on the exact needs of the consumer. So what th you can do is you can order pots. For example, I want one bathroom, one kitchen, one toilet. If I move out, the pots will be taken out and the next, uh, the next, renter or buyer can say, yeah, but I need three bathrooms. So it's way more flexible to the changing needs of nowadays. Handlefy is a, ver a brand new startup. It only launched last uh, week. It's storage on demand. It's also answering to that neo-nomad uh, mindset that we are creating. Uh, this is actually your whole house in your pocket. It's a website where you can scan your whole house and say, That's, I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. You can pick it up, you can storage it, and if I need it, I will give you a call or I will push a button on your website and you can bring it back to me. So it's actually taking care of you so you can live that free lifestyle that you need. And this one, I will show you before I say something about it.
users, of course, very excited. I talked about space colonization before, but if we want to move around free, why only on this earth? And I have to say, the United Arab Emirates, I'm really excited about it because they have very great ideas, but they also have the money to try. And I think that's really uh, sometimes a problem in Europe, that we have the ideas, but not always the funds to try. So I was very happy to see this. And the personal drones, also an innovation from uh, the Emirates. And this week, the first test flight was made. So you can p sit in the drone, and it can take you wherever you want as a taxi. Only thing that uh, is on the downside, the battery is only up to 15 minutes yet. So you have to make sure you will be down before the, your battery is empty. Don't think. Uh... So if we have to uh, talk about a vision, if we, have to, if, we have, if we are looking into a vision of work and living in 2030, we can definitely state that our work and living situations are becoming more liquid and more flexible. So that's a, quite a challenge for networks, for communication. Because we are not longer bound to time, to place or, or to firmness. So how we, do we handle that? Because if everything is uncertain and unclear, everything is possible. And I think the biggest challenge is our systems and our rules because we they change way slower than our mindsets often do so how are we going to tackle that problem identity identity is actually something as old as humanity who are we in about five years who are we in 10 years and who are we in my, maybe 20 years how will we profile ourselves something the internet is of course of big impact in Identity is as old as human being, of course, and nowadays identity is becoming a liquid understanding. It's formable, uh, but back in the days it was actually very static. The family you were born in, that was your identity. And it was very difficult to get out of that static identity because it, you were born with it. But it's not anymore. We are living in an information society, in a digitalized, in a digital, digitalized, it's quite a difficult word actually, a world where we can shape ourselves however we want. Today I can be this kind of Cecile, and back home I might have a knot and sweatpants and be really totally something, somebody different. And on the internet, I could be on the Bahamas right now. So that makes identity a really difficult, um, subject to, 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 to take, but also from a producer or from a company um, view, it's really difficult to catch that target group as you don't, you, you, you're not sure anymore who somebody really is. We are creating our own realities. And if we talk about identity, we don't need strict rules, but we do want guidelines that help us. We are not steadfast, but we are changeable. And brands becoming our new guidelines, and that's really an opportunity for the future. Because if brands are becoming a new identity, how can you help that interesting consumer to see you as an as a example? And the biggest challenge is recognizing the real in a makeable world. So one trend is which is very interesting in this domain, is blobbing. We are creating our own invisible bubbles where we can style ourselves the way we want. So an internet and technology is helping us do that, of course, because we can be whoever we want. And on one hand, that's great because that's the ultimate self-determination. But if it's really the right way,
goes on and on. 15 years ago, the internet was an escape from reality, and now reality is an escape from the internet. Said a very wise friend of mine, who is the founder of Wabi Sabi Lab, and I thought that's definitely true. So, the biggest challenge, and also maybe the biggest task for people in the internet and the mobile world, is how can we make this social again, and how can we help? How, how can we make this tool help people instead of pulling them out of the real world? Absurdism also a really exciting trend within identity because absurdism has everything to do with the insecure time we are living in nowadays people are insecure about who they are because everything there's happening something every day and we are being overloaded with fear and extremistic views but also with extremistic movements uh, with new technologies there's a lot of fear for all the absurd things that are happening to us. And the only way to fight these absurd movements is to answer with the same level of absurdism so that you can find a disbalance in all these views that might be too far away for you. So we have MacJesus, for example. MacJesus is a sort of a new religion all about focused about McDonald's. They said, that's going to be your new religion, McDonald's. Quite absurd, right? And also the baby womp. Oh. Yes. No, we're going too fast. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Let's try this. Yes. OK, the baby womp. It's a concept about uh, a futuristic concept about how we should um, grow babies outside of the female body, but in a, in a technological womb, so you can have it in your living room and you can talk about it. Totally extreme, of course, and those uh, makers or the, uh, the people behind the idea already said, this is not reality, we don't want it. But it is a way to raise the ethical questions that come with this ex extreme fast technolog te technological innovation. Do good. Another trend if it comes to identity. Wealth is no longer only what you have and what you possess, but it's also what you leave on this world. So what is your heritage? What is your contribution to the quality of life of others? And doing good is being good. It's about being sustainable, and be aware of the impact that we have on this world. We are searching for some kind of confirmation externally of how we are doing throughout our behavior. And there, with long term, is way more important than short term. For example, the battery free cell phone. We now buy a cell phone because it looks good, because it's a sort of a static symbol. The battery free cell phone says, that's not the reason why you have a cell phone. It should, all, it should be about what it is about. And this battery-free cell phone is, of course, way more sustainable than the iPhones or the Samsungs that we have all in our pockets. And what about Unicorn Pledge? It's for young startups, young entrepreneurs. There are more and more people that make millions in just one year. But we don't need it. And the Unicorn Pledge is a pledge where young entrepreneurs say before they start if i get this amount of money the rest i will invest in other entrepreneurs because it's about spreading ideas and it's about getting innovations valuable innovations out there and it's not about only about making a lot of money but we can also see that that the internet that technology is being used um, for some betterment of this world. Marhub is a new chatbot that helps asylum seekers, so the refugees, to prepare for their interviews and help them one step further. So this is definitely technology used for the better. If we look into a vision regarding identity, I believe it depends a lot about how it goes in the world. If this, our world is rural, identity is often going back to its core. But if we are doing good, we dare to change uh, how we think about things. And people are actually always ser searching for comfort and for support. Um, 
and identity is all about expressing yourself. And I definitely believe that if we are working towards a better world, that we can like form one major identity where we actually want the same, but express us ourselves in our own uh, individual way. And the last one is status and communities. And the funny thing with status is, um, if you talk about, talk about status, people always think about money, about uh, possessions, about beauty, about splendor. And I'm very happy to see that the first cracks are visible in that approach of, of uh, wealth. Because the old form is based on having money and buying stuff. But now the first, we can see a tilting in the new form of wealth. So it's not all about possession, about stuff. But it's about something new. The first seeds of this bottom-up approach for a new kind of wealth are definitely visible. Uh, we can see more and more young entrepreneurs. Um, we can see more and more developments for a better world. And we can see a sort of positive revolution where people work for a social, more social community. And I believe the new world is thinking different from all those others. And I actually want to do a little test to see how uh, much wealth we already have in this room. So I want to ask you to all stand up, please. And we are going to do the alien challenge together. So I want to ask you to imagine your alien in your head for, and you have like five seconds to do that. So how does your alien look like? So who has an alien with like those sensors on top? Nobody? Yes, I see one hand. I'm very sorry, but you may sit down. So who had an alien with like big eyes? I see a lot. You can all sit down. And for example, who had an alien with hands and feet? Some, yeah, you may all sit down. So, can I ask somebody, what, what did you have in mind, for example? Oh, it's not working? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Um, for example, you can I ask you, maybe I can hear you better. Me? Yes, what did you have in mind? Uh, like bigger head and bigger body. Okay. And for example, who had something s totally different? You maybe? That's really cool. She said, no shape and transparent. You yeah, may all sit that's down. <laughs> it's just to point out that the new world is all about thinking different because our minds are sort of programmed to have a specific uh, image if we talk about aliens. But if you really want to make a change, you really have to challenge yourself to think outside of those paths. And the pessimists will say that new world is driven by all the fear in the world. And the optimist, which am I, I would say it's all about a more socializing world. Because our world is very fast and we need co-creation, cooperative working and new rules to build together and to trust together. And actually communities is also something again which comes from history because it's a, it's a term from the, from the 60s. And so you see how important history is for our futures. And something I am really happy about is that innovation always arises from questions from uh, people that have problems or displeasure. And therefore, I think that gap between poor and rich might tighten quicker than we think because those who are on the bottom, they have the urge, they have a hope to change the things that they are not happy about. Because the scare thing, the scare resource in the 21st century will not be technology. I mean, here is a, a, a hall full of experts. It will be attention and different thinking. And if you're focusing on, on that, that's the way to make a difference. So one of the last trends I brought today is mishmash society. It's about the get together of a variety group of people. 
and in the future imperfections are being seen as a strength and the underdog might be on top and homogeneity is actually standing still while uh, heterogene heterogeneity is all about progress because we cannot do it alone anymore and imperfection is that secret weapon in a new and united society It's easy to put people in boxes. There's us, and there's them. The high earners, and those just getting by. Those we trust, and those we try to avoid. There's the new Danes, and those who've always been here. The people from the countryside, and those who've never seen a cow. The religious, and the self-confident. There are those we share something with, and those we don't share anything with. Velkommen. Det kommer til at stille jer nogle spørgsmål i dag. Nogle af dem kan godt være lidt personlige, men jeg håber, I vil svare ærligt på dem. Hvem herinde i rummet var klassens klog? Hvem er bonusforældre? And then suddenly, there's us. We who believe in life after death. We who've seen UFOs. And all of us who love to dance. We who've been bullied. And we who've bullied others. And then there's us, the lucky ones who've had sex this past week. We who are broken hearted. We who are madly in love. We who feel lonely. We who are bisexual. And we who acknowledge the courage of others. We who have found the meaning of life. And we who have saved lives. And then there's all of us who just love Denmark. It's uh, actually a, a movie made by the tourist board of Denmark. But the message in this uh, movie is what really touched me because we should be more focusing on the we because there is always a we in whatever crowd you are the last trend i wanted to talk about with you is involve me because we are all in this together if we want or not you have to look around you that's the people you have to do it with and involve me is all about the depowering about the holy cursey way of thinking it's about interference from higher hand. We are done with that. It's not longer desirable. We want more self-determination because we want to count, because we have the intelligence and we have the tools to have information and knowledge about our future world. And we simply want to be useful and leave some kind of heritage in this world. And I really love this example, Eli Q. It's a social but by intuition robots which gives the elderly a sort of um, connection back because what you see with elderly people is that they often feel uh, useless in society. So it's actually technology used for people to involve them in, back into society. Or Citizen Lab. It's a platform in Antwerp, Belgium, where uh, citizens can um, put their ideas online and if other people say oh that's a really great idea it has to be discussed in the government so it really gives them a sort of voice to change their city because it's from 
our humans. And then last, paint by drone. It's an it's a Italian design bureau, Carlo Ratti Associati, who uh, developed this. And it's actually a drone which paints the city, city beautification, but it's, uh, it's being um, managed by the people. So there's a platform again, an app, where you can say this piece of city needs some beautification and this is what I want there. So it's again involving people and human beings in what's happening in their areas, in their cities. The vision about status and community in my eyes will be from alone to together and from we need to to I want to and from diverge to combine. I believe hats will turn towards each other more and more in the future because we, um, we acknowledge that we can't do it alone. The importance of the crowd actually, and we are going to be more aware about our impact of this world and of others. So we're going from ego to populous and we are being very aware about the power of networking. I don't want to let you go without a sort of final conclusion because I over flood you with information and as I said in the beginning about some things you will disagree some things you might agree or maybe not but I hope there's something today that triggers you so uh, badly that you're going to look into it and that's going to be your inspiration to make a change in the future for me the words of the future are freedom self-determination convenience and added value because I think we should make life as convenient as, as can be. Because we have the knowledge and the tools to do that. And we should focus on what is really important. That means listening to other, to your consumers, but also to yourself. What is it you really need? What is it that you really want? And I think we should be putting down frames, but we should give others the freedom to fill them the way uh, they want. And technology, can actually be a tool uh, for these shifting values, but will also be the driver of new ethical issues. So whatever you do, think about what it will mean in that future. And I said it before, I don't believe um, the future is fixed. I believe every single day is yesterday's future and every tomorrow today's potential. So I think we should be very critical about what we make and what we do and what we say because everything is connected with each other, either on the net, but also in real life. And our choices and whatever we do are of so much influence on that tomorrow, on that future. So I want to dare you to not blindfully wait for that future, but to just grab it like into your own hands and dare to, to go off that beaten track and do things that we really need in that future. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Cecile. You bedazzled wow. us. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and first, let's see if there are questions from uh, the audience, and then I'll have some things for you, too. Andrebari? There's Hello, Hi. my name Hi. is Christy. I'm a software developer and I want to ask you, uh, I've, we've seen in the movie regarding Facebook and everyone that uh, posted on Facebook something. There, the movie was to me about conformity, right? Everyone there just posted something on Facebook to look cool for their Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't any, anything related to conformity in your presentation of the future and on the vision of the future. Do you think this is like a danger that in the future we would all be all like the others? Like there will be more conformity and less individuality? Um, uh, no, I don't think so. And I, uh, I showed the movie to, because I believe this is happening now and I think we should uh, tilt it around because it's exactly what you say um, with Instagram and Facebook we can make whoever we want but that doesn't mean it's real and that's what I mean with that's the biggest challenge and with us that uh, conform and that belonging to 
I believe that the basic of that, that is something which is the same for everybody. But I think, and I believe, and I think that's where technology or internet could uh, make the change to uh, developing something that would help people uh, diverse, but in the end they want the same. So no, I don't think uh, that we wouldn't be like individuals anymore, but I do think the tools to make ourselves individual, like individuals is not here yet. So I see that as a chance that people can conform, but within their own identity. And one more thing, still related to the vision of the future that you are having about communities. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a place in this future for individuals that are exceptional? Or the communities that are going to form are going to level the individuals that are uh, exceptional uh, in relation to the communities. Is there a place in this future for, I don't know, people like Dante or Shakespeare or something like that? Or everyone will need to level up to fit in in this new? Um, no, I don't think so. And that's what I talked about, the new skills. So for example, and that's really nice that you mentioned Shakespeare because that's actually back to history to look at the future again. And um, that's what I meant with new skills. We are sort of in a, a package of skills now and that's like falling apart because the world is changing and those skills are being taken over. So I think those exceptional skills are, might be the skills of the future. And with that community, I don't mean that all people with the same skills are um, like, pulling together, but more like, what do you have that I need? So people are forming their hubs with different skills because you don't have all the skills. I'm sorry, but I don't have all the skills either. So we are looking around each other to make communities that are filled with all the different skills so we can do it together because we can't do it alone anymore. So that's what I meant with communities. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, uh, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. Um, I had a question related to neo-nomads. Uh, so you mentioned and you uh, explained a bit what they're for and I also think they were connected with some other things, but it, I still wasn't clear about the concept. Could you please elaborate on the concept of neo-nomads? Uh, you mean the trend or a specific example? No, no, the trend. Um, what you does know it entail? Yeah, we, of course, the nomads, the, the, the subject of nomads is that they walk around. And new nomads is actually the same concept in a new time. So for example, old nomads, they just uh, went around on the country from way to way. And with new nomads, I mean that everything in the new nomads' lives is focusing on freedom and on moving around. So both work, we are jumping from, from work to work, uh, but also living. So not being at one place for the whole time of your life in one city, but it's all about the, that freedom to move around however you want in what kind of uh, state you are. So that's what I mean with neo-nomads. It's actually the same um, term as the old nomads, but in a new zeitgeist. Does that explain a little bit better? We can maybe talk about better, it a bit yeah. later because I yeah, think yeah. I'm over no, time. No, it's okay. Now. You're not over time. <laughs> okay, no? okay. <laughs> all right, thank you. But C Cecile, I'm, I'm left with a question. Actually, what it is to be a human being in the future. I think that this, from everything that I've seen, is that will, it will be redefined what it is to be a human being. Yeah, and of course, there's more than my vision. And of course, there's also people that say the future is going to be horrible, and we have did, and we have, we have this, and we have that, and it's all going to be one big disaster. But um, with this talk, it might also have a little bit of my idealism in it. And that's what I meant with, I don't believe that the future is fixed. Um, because I think that what we do today, and if we all have a more social vo focus on that future, that we can steer it in this kind of uh, future. Because the first seeds uh, that show that this need for this kind of future is there. So I think it's our responsibility to really uh, focus on achieving that as well. Yeah. Well, I can speak 
for myself that um, at 54 I started a startup and I'm 56 now and I should be by all accounts kind of at the end of life of you know, <laughs> innovation and living oh, no. and it's not the case. Actually I'm in a startup mode and I wanted to be an astronaut and I realized that I'm actually living the life of an astronaut. I'm making my food every morning and drink it from I don't care to sit at dinners and lunches and all the fluff. Uh, I'm connected, my spaceship at home, my home is very well connected with the world, with the internet. I am available everywhere, anywhere. <laughs> I can monitor everything that is interesting in this world if I'm interested in it. So I'm a bit shocked that actually, even, you know, you think of Bucharest or you think of Romania, you think uh, that uh, you, you can live actually the future now and it's happening. As, as we speak. It's excited, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> while being at Microsoft, I was waiting in line for an espresso and the barista uh, asked us, was right at the time where Dolly was cloned. And he asked us, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? And you know, I had time, there was nothing to do, wait for a coffee. <laughs> and I realized that whatever can do immense harm is immensely useful. So we are used to think of something to just be immensely useful and hope it's not going to be immensely harmful. And actually, it's the other way around. When it's immensely harmful, we can find immensely helpful means to it. Yeah. So it's an interesting paradigm and paradox. Absolutely. That but that's why I believe in human beings so much, yeah. because I think at the end, there's always, or till now, there's always a human hand yeah. involved with it. And I think that's also what I told about the ethical questions. Yeah. There's a lot of new yeah. ethical questions coming up and Dolly is a perfect yeah, example right. of it indeed. So yeah. job security is innovation. Yes, <laughs> good. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cecile. It's Thank been you wonderful. So much. Thank you. So, Akuma, in Chetem Pausa Networking Break, Punala Patrushun Sfert, Nerevedem Aichi. Enjoy. <laughs>